Yo, awesome guys, welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to a video called The Largest Black Hole in, in the Universe Size Comparison by Kurziger. Again, I'm never good at saying the channel's name, but I do enjoy this channel and his videos are very interesting. And I mean, I enjoy space videos as well, so it's like the perfect combo. But yeah, man, black holes are like one of those things that are still like... I feel like people are so obsessed with them because they're still so sort of unknown. There's all these theories about them, about like what they actually do. Can you teleport through time or just, shh, not maybe not. What is it? Not teleport through time. No, you can go through them and then you end up somewhere else. And it's just like you sort of teleport through space. I guess teleport, teleport through time is the same term. But um, yeah, man, I mean, I, that's obviously, I don't think it's going to be true, but there's always these different theories about what they do. And I mean, this probably doesn't go into that kind of thing, but it's going to see the sizes of them. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I just think it's pretty cool to see sort of, size comparison videos are always quite fun to see. So when it's with black holes, it will be really interesting because I feel like there is, I know there's one in our solar system, but I guess it's probably quite small in comparison to a lot of the others. Um, again, I'd guess I don't know how big black holes actually get, but I assume there are there are some that are probably bigger. Well, they're they're from wait, they're from star. Wait, what are black holes from? They're not from stars that have died. Wait, are they? No, I don't know because I don't I don't know I don't actually know. I can't remember what black holes are from. Wait, what creates black? I always do this at the start. What creates black? Holes. Is it dead, is it like dying stars? Most black holes are from the remnants of a large star that dies. Oh, it is in a supernova explosion. Some stars become dense neutron stars. Okay, so they're going to be very big. I mean, I knew they were very big, but the size of stars. So they're going to be like the sun, the sun's sort of size, but probably bigger. But yeah, let's just jump into this quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter. Links in the description for those interested. Save for Patreon links were there for those interested. A lot of cursed gut videos used to get blocked. I think it's like they've changed it now, but they used to get blocked to my channel. And with that, I had to post them on my Patreon, plus a lot of other videos. So if you're interested in seeing a lot of extra videos that I've done, links are there for those who care. But yeah, man, let's just jump into it. The largest things in the universe are black holes. In contrast oh, to things. The largest things in. Okay. Jesus. Like planets or stars, they have no physical size limit and can literally grow endlessly. Although in reality, specific things need to happen to create different kinds of black holes, from really tiny ones to the largest single things in the universe. So how do black holes grow? And how large is the largest of them all? They just absorb, don't they? They just grow from that, I'm pretty sure. They'll absorb planets and just get bigger and bigger. This video will not discuss how black holes work or how they form, since we've looked at that in detail in our black hole and neutron star series. You can check them out afterwards. For now, we're interested in finding the largest thing in the universe. Let's start really, really small. Primordial black holes. The smallest kind of black holes may or may not exist. If they do, they're probably the oldest objects in the universe, older even than atoms. What they would have formed fuck? just after the Big Bang, when the universe... They're older than atoms. I would have thought they would need atoms to form them. What the fuck? <laughs> that is ridiculous. The universe was so dense with violent energy that any tiny pocket that was just slightly more dense than its neighbours could produce a black hole. The smallest primordial black hole that could still be around would be a trillion kilograms or so, the mass of a big mountain. <laughs> and yet they would be no bigger than a proton. A primordial black hole. What the hell? <laughs> it has the mass of a mount a big mountain, but the size of oh, wait, a size of the size of a neutron, did you say? And yet they would be no bigger than a proton. Right off. A primordial black hole with the mass of Earth would barely be larger than a coin. This makes them uh, very hard to find, so we fuck? haven't actually observed any yet. If they exist, they may even be the mysterious dark matter that holds galaxies together. That's amazing. Let's move on to the kinds of black holes that we know for sure are out there. Stellar black holes. To make a black hole, we need to compress enough matter so that it collapses into itself. After that, the more mass we throw at it, the larger it becomes. In today's universe, only the most violent cosmic events can create the necessary conditions, such as the merger of neutron stars or when the core of a very massive star collapses in a supernova. To have a unit to work with here, we'll use the mass of our Sun, 
about 2 million trillion trillion kilograms. The smallest known black hole has 2.7 times the mass of the Sun, which works out as a sphere around 16 kilometers in diameter, large enough to cover Paris. Bro, I didn't know black holes would be able to be this small. So if this sort of black hole was like next to, I mean, I don't know, next to Earth, say there's no life here or anything, it's just Earth, would it just absorb the, the planet? Because it's so small, I don't know how it would be possible, but black holes are just those things that are so weird. I just imagine a little black hole just consume something a million times bigger than it. I wonder. Another lightweight black hole is the companion to the V723 Mon red giant star. This star is 24 times larger than our sun, 30 million kilometers in. And also, it's crazy how they're so small yet they're so heavy. It's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. It defies all the laws of physics. Diameter. And yet, it's thrown around by a tiny black hole just 17.2 kilometers wide. <laughs> This tiny thing bullying the star is so much smaller that we can barely even show them in comparison. That is unreal. One of the largest known stellar black holes is M33X7. It currently spends its time eating a 70 solar mass blue giant bit by bit. As all that stolen matter circles towards the black hole, like water going down a drain, friction heats it up to temperatures high enough to shine 500,000 times brighter than our sun. And yet, X7 is only 15.65 solar masses and 92 kilometers wide, just big enough to cast a shadow on Corsica. <laughs> what that French, that French island, what the f- how, how do scientists find this stuff out? I'm sorry, I don't understand. How do scientists find this stuff out? How can they see that this stuff is happening? People tell me under every video when I ask how do they know this, they tell me that there's, a, there's always a reason, because there is. I just don't get how technology can show this stuff or how maths can show this stuff or whatever it is. Science, man. Another level, man. It, it truly baffles me. To grow much oh, larger, black holes have to either devour a lot of stars or better, merge with one another. The instruments that make it possible to detect these mergers are very new, so we're currently discovering a lot of exciting things. Oh, wow. Like two massive black holes that we detected in a galaxy 17 billion light years away. As they spun around each other violently, they released more energy in the form of gravitational waves than the combined light from all the stars in the Milky Way in 4,400 years. The new black hole they formed is about the size of Germany and is 142 solar masses. And here we hit a curious gap in scale. There are lots of black holes up to 150 solar masses and then there's nothing for a long time until we suddenly hit black holes that are millions of times more massive. Which is a bit confusing because we had this idea that black holes are consistently growing and growing. But for the most massive black holes, this process is not fast enough to explain their existence today. The universe is simply not old enough for these supermassive black holes to have formed by eating stars and merging with each other. Something else must have happened. To explain how we got the largest black holes in the universe, we might need the largest stars that ever existed. Quasi-stars. To get a sense of scale, we can compare them to the largest stars that exist today. Our sun is like a grain of sand next to them. We don't know if quasi-stars actually existed, but they're an interesting concept when it comes to supercharging black hole development. The idea is that the matter in the early universe was so dense that quasi-stars could grow to thousands of times the mass of our Sun. The cores of these stars might have been crushed by their own weight so much to actually collapse into black holes while the star was still forming. In contrast to stars today that would destroy themselves in the process, inside quasi-stars a deadly balance could emerge. Gravity pressed the supermassive star together, feeding the black hole and heating the material falling in to such a degree that the radiation pressure kept the star stable. And so these quickly growing black holes might have been able to consume the quasi star for millions of years and grow far bigger than any modern stellar black hole. Black holes several thousand times the mass of the sun and wider than the entire Earth. These black holes might have become the seeds for supermassive black holes. I'm not gonna lie, I just thought all black holes were so much bigger than the Earth. I just thought black holes were just, like, beyond, I mean, I guess, I guess there are some beyond just massive ones, but like, I mean, these are, I'm not saying these aren't big, but like, I just, I don't know, I thought these were huge, huge. 
So now we arrive at the kings of our universe, the largest single bodies in existence. The centers of most. Okay, mate, I don't know if that's the right word. Huge, because I know they are so big, man. But like, I'm just sort of thinking, like, compared to Earth, I thought they just like, millions of times bigger. Most galaxies contain a supermassive black hole, and they are monstrous. In the Milky Way, we have Sagittarius A star, a supermassive black hole with about 4 million solar masses that is calm and collected and just does its thing. We know it sits there because we can see a number of stars being thrown around by a seemingly empty spot. And despite its incredible mass, its radius is still only 17 times our sun. Okay, so it is very big. Okay, I don't know what I was saying. I don't know what I was saying at all. <laughs> smaller than most giant stars, but millions of times more massive. Because supermassive black holes are They're so massive. massive and located at the center of galaxies, many people imagine them as being a bit like the sun in the solar system, an anchor that glues everything else together and forces it into an orbit. But this is a misconception. While the Sun makes up 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system, supermassive Jeez. black holes usually only have 0.001% of the mass of their galaxy. The billions of stars in galaxies are not gravitationally bound to them. Instead, it's the gravitational effect of dark matter which holds them together. Many supermassive black holes aren't gentle giants, especially when they're feeding on the clouds of mass in their galaxy. The one at the center of the BL Lacerti galaxy is devouring so much material that it produces jets of plasma accelerated to nearly the speed of light. If Earth were orbiting this huge body, it would seem 115 times larger than our sun in the sky, and we'd be burnt to a crisp in seconds by its glowing hot accretion disk. At this point, black holes become so large that stars seem ridiculous. <laughs> what the fuck? What was I saying? They're massive, but I knew they were this big. I knew it. Obviously tiny compared to them. The galaxy Cygnus A has a supermassive black hole with 2.5 billion solar masses and 14.7 billion kilometers wide, which would mean that if it took the place of our sun, it would swallow all the planets and stretch halfway the to the edge of our solar system. Man. It's devouring so much mass and material that it churns its disk into a kind of magnetic funnel, spewing gas out, making tremendous radio lobes towering over the galaxy half a million light years in diameter. That's two and a half Milky Ways wide. What? Another what? pretty large supermassive black hole sits in the galaxy Messier 87. It has 6.5 billion solar masses and was the first black hole we got an actual photo of or rather, of the glowing gas around the edge of a menacing shadow. This sphere of darkness is so large that it covers our entire solar system. And yet, there is a scale even above these kinds of objects. Ultramassive black holes. You're taking the piss, man. Now they're bigger than I thought they were. Now we reach the most massive black holes, perhaps the largest single bodies that will ever exist. These black holes have eaten so much that they've grown to tens of billions of solar masses, their gravity the engine for a quasar, an accretion disk shining brighter than thousands of galaxies full of stars. So massive that they deserve a title of their own, ultra-massive black holes. The ultra-massive black hole at the center of galaxy OJ287 is 18 billion solar masses. It's so big that it has a supermassive black hole nearly 40 times larger than Sagittarius A star orbiting it. Jeez. This thing does. Bro, this thing is so damn built and it's just so damn big it's got black holes orbiting it as itself. Like, that's just. Fair play. I mean, I've got to respect it, mate. I've got to respect the hustle. Defies imagination and that's is unreal. really hard to compare to anything. It can comfortably fit three solar systems side by side inside of it. Let's end this insane competition and get to the king of kings. Tun 618, a black hole that we can observe consuming galaxies worth of matter, is shining with the brightness of a hundred trillion stars, visible from 18 billion light years away. It has an incredible 66 billion solar masses, a black hole so large that it would take light a week to reach the singularity after crossing the event horizon. About 11 solar systems could sit inside of it, side by side. It may very well be the largest single body in the universe, but in reality, it's probably even larger. 
Since Tun 618 is so far away, we only see what it looked like 10 billion years ago. In any case, black holes are scary and mysterious and gigantic. They'll be here after everything else dies and growing larger and larger. OK, now let's do the trip again. From the smallest possible black hole all the way up to the largest. Okay, so Earth, that's where I was confused. I was confused as to like how Earth was much bigger than all of these black holes, but then, yeah, it got bigger. Let's try something new. What, what is everything? I, every time I see space videos, it just makes me wonder, like, what is everything? What's the point of anything, man? <laughs> How did this all happen? Today, we can call it Behind the Lies, a short behind the scenes bit about the necessary inaccuracies in this video, because it's not really actually possible to rank black holes like trading cards. How so? Well, while we've catalogued millions of stars, we really only have good data on a couple of dozen black holes. That's because black hole gazing wasn't really a thing until 50 years ago and technically still isn't because we can't see black holes. We can only derive their properties from studying their gravitational effects on the matter around them, like the orbit of stars that come close to them. This effect depends on the mass of the black hole, which we can approximate at the most basic level with Kepler's laws. But this comes with huge uncertainties and error bars. Then we have to convert mass to size next, which brings new uncertainties. For example, we calculated the radius from the mass using the Schwarzschild equation, which for the sake of simplicity assumes black holes are perfectly round. How, do these, how are these equations even formed? Who made this? I guess it was someone called Schwarzschild or whatever. But how did he come up with this equation? Bro, science is just nuts. It doesn't make sense. Nothing makes and sense. And don't spin. A kind Max of black hole that doesn't really Max exist. The reality is that physics on these scales is a bit fuzzy. So, some of the black holes we talked about here may be way smaller or way bigger. We just don't know for sure. We shimmered around this problem by comparing different sources with different kinds of values and using different mass calculations to arrive at a standardized list that allowed us to be as accurate as humanly possible. You can look at all of this in our source doc. As a result, this script was written with the tears of experts we drove crazy with our obsession for the best values they could live with. In this process, tons of stuff got cut and didn't make it into the final video. But luckily, we've found a way to not waste all of it. We've created a lot of black hole merch, spanning the whole range from somewhat bonkers to more serious. Oh, wow. This way, we get to explore a topic from different angles, and you get to continue having fun with black holes after this video. That's pretty cool, actually. I rate it. I rate the hearts of getting their money. You love to see it. But yeah, man. Ah, the the monthly dose of existential dread in a doable cartoon bird format. The music with the size comparison at the end was so intense. That has to be the single most astronomically, astronomically epic and fitting soundtrack for a video. Yeah, it was cool, man. It was cool. I liked it a lot. Hearing that dark matter could be a microscopic, could be microscopic black holes that are nearly as old as the universe itself was a mind blown. Was a mind blow that I wasn't prepared for. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. I don't understand it, man. The weirdest thing I've heard today is that tiny black holes named Unicorn is building a star many times. <laughs> Mass of us. <laughs> You'd love to see it, my first minutes of this isn't even final form. <laughs> Every time I thought it was the biggest, there was a bigger one. The same to think about, yeah, man. I always have an existential crisis when it comes to these sort of space reactions, man. They just blow me away. To different degrees but yeah i mean hopefully you enjoyed this reaction if you want more curves gap more space reactions you know how it, how it is suggest it in the comments but yeah man that's it for this one i need to take a breather i'm not gonna lie this is just <laughs> it's crazy man but hopefully you enjoy this reaction and then and until next time like subscribe peace